This meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Department uh, Board of Commissioners is being broadcast live at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. This meeting was videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. Um, just a, a few acknowledgments. Uh, there will be no uh, cab representative present this evening and anyone else in the public who wishes to be acknowledged, we can at this time, but I don't see anyone. So uh, we will move on. And John Stempek, will you be our board secretary? I'd be happy to. Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. So I'd like to uh, begin this evening uh, with a quick update uh, on the Massachusetts Municipal Light Plants, or MLPs. Uh, uh, this is a uh, conference that uh, a number of the uh, commissioners attended back on July 8th uh, on the telecom opportunity today. And it was held at the Spiz Berkman, Berkman Center for the Internet and Society at Harvard University. So uh, at this event, uh, one of the major uh, items presented was uh, Holyoke's MLP uh, has a telecom division that was successfully uh, adding competition in the business sector, and they helped attract a $90 million computing center, saving the municipality more than $300,000 a year by providing network services for the city. Uh, this was done without issuing debt, raising taxes, or affecting electricity ratepayers. Uh, as a board, uh, we've already recommended that this topic be studied within the RMLD territory. Uh, the RMLD and the town have fiber loops up and running, and we already lease some of the fiber. Uh, however, there is still spare capacity, so that's the opportunity to be considered. Uh, we've seen that an MLP telecom offering can provide revenue and also boost economic development. Uh, however, we understand that for anything to move forward, the town governments and our MLD leadership needs to be actively engaged in identifying the opportunities. So uh, in summary, we'll make this process part of our strategic focus uh, during the upcoming meetings uh, for the commissioners. And uh, there's also, uh, uh, and I might add, uh, uh, some of the information I'm reporting tonight is courtesy of Dave Talbot. He's, uh, absent tonight, as well as uh, Dave Hennessy, uh, two other commissioners, and Dave Talbot uh, has informed me that there's a follow-up meeting in September, uh, September 29th, at the NEPA headquarters in Littleton. So at that event, uh, the expectation is there'll be an MLP roadmap for how companies can, uh, in, in, the, in this area, can pursue opportunities for their communities and uh, discuss ways for collaboration. So m more on that uh, in the coming week or so. So uh, that was an overview. Uh, I know, uh, John, you were also in attendance. If you had any other I, comments I, you'd like to add? Yeah, I thought it was a very good session. It was an all-day uh, session, and it, I think it gave us good visibility into what the rest of um, uh, municipal light plants are doing uh, within Massachusetts. Uh, it was uh, quite eye-opening in terms of what they could do. No, most of them, of course, are pursuing business customers. I do think that uh, perhaps even a step ahead of some of them, you know, you've been doing pursuing business customers for a number of years now, and so perhaps it's uh, incumbent on us to, to make sure we're getting a fair market price for uh, for the services that we're offering, and then to obviously expand it from an economic development perspective for all members of the towns. But uh, overall, I thought it was a day long session that uh, was quite interesting. Yeah, so uh, that's a good point, John. So, uh, in addition to the town of Reading, we certainly will want uh, to include the other towns serviced by RMLD in the discussions. I'd also say uh, one of the considerations is uh, 
you know, there's, there is opportunity here, but we also want to make sure we manage the uh, time and resources because uh, we've already heard uh, in recent months a lot of the good projects that are on the slate as a result of the reliability study and the organizational uh, studies, and those require resources, funding, and, and above all, attention units on the part of the, the operations staff and, and the board to the extent that we have involvement. So uh, it's just a note of, you know, we want to be uh, appropriately uh, uh, involved, but also cautious that uh, we don't spend uh, more time and resources uh, than, uh, than is necessary uh, in terms of what the uh, benefit is. So we'll, that's the whole purpose of pursuing that, and so we will, as I said, report more in future meetings. Colleen, anything you'd add to that? Okay. Um, so uh, the uh, second uh, item uh, that I want to discuss is the uh, formation of the uh, General Manager Review Committee. So uh, everyone should be aware that uh, as part of the ongoing process, uh, Colleen, who's our General Manager, is entitled to and uh, should receive an annual review, uh, which includes uh, a compensation review as well, a performance review and uh, review of compensation. And uh, so this is the time of year. So what I'd like to do at this point uh, is uh, recommend a uh, subcommittee, which is how we've handled this in the past. Uh, that I think should be straightforward because usually we have three of us and uh, since we're missing two and there's three here, it would seem logical that uh, John and uh, also Phil join me as the uh, subcommittee. So I'd yeah. like to make that as a recommendation. Any discussion or other comments or suggestions? I think we have some fairly well aligned criteria yeah. that we used last yep. year. And yep. I think we'll most definitely be on time this year, so I don't <laughs> think we'll delay it again. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, right. Yep. And uh, for Colleen's purposes, uh, uh, whenever the final uh, recommendation comes forward, uh, as per agreement, uh, Colleen's uh, performance review and any recommended increase is uh, effective as right. of the, the start date for her uh, contract. Yeah. And then also setting objectives for the coming year, too. Should be part of that also. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, can we entertain a motion? Or you can. The committee? Okay. All right, I'll move that uh, John, Phil, and Tom be appointed. Uh, to the general manager's uh, review committee. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. And Gene, Gene will fill in the, all the, the, the complete names, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the gist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the ten or less line tonight. <laughs> okay, so that motion carries 3-0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, next uh, on the agenda is the approval of the uh, board minutes from February 26th. I'll move that the February 26th, 2015 Minutes be approved as presented. Second. Any discussion? Any hearing? All in favor? So motion carries 3 0 0. Okay, at this time, would ask Colleen for her general manager report. Thank you. Good evening. Um, as, as everyone knows, because we've, we've commented on, on fee trimming for quite some time now, uh, we went to a new uh, contractor. Uh, through a RFP pr process. We now trim based on spans uh, as opposed to ROE pay. Uh, Mayo was the successful bidder. Uh, we changed the tree trimming to a three-year cycle. Um, we cut in a, in, in prune in a directional for the health and aesthetics of the tree. Uh, we are still in the town of Reading, cutting only up to five feet, whereas when we went to each of the towns and spoke to the town managers and the selectmen of the other towns. We presented um, the vegetation management plans and they were approved, I believe, and we went to eight feet. Uh, the purpose of that is that that's a standard um, utility cutting back uh, for three year cycle. So that you're not wasting time and there's efficiency in not bringing trucks back into the same area. Uh, we've been extremely happy with Mayer. They are, uh, uh, you know, they're getting their trucks, they eat in their truck for lunch, and they just keep rolling. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's very refreshing for, for us because the program is working. We're getting our money's worth. But we're finding that in the town of Reading, 
uh, it's, it might be putting a little bit of a, a burden as far as customers calling uh, for the tree warden um, and the assistant tree warden. So uh, while we have uh, communication established in all four of the towns, we met uh, with the town of Reading, the tree warden, assistant tree warden, DPW director, the conservation commission, myself, uh, chief engineer, Hamid, um, to go over how we could improve the communication because that's really what the issues were. Um, for example, we were we emailed the tree warden every single day of where we're going to be trimming. The trimming map is on our website so anyone can see where we're going to be trimming. But because they're pretty straight out with their work, they it, it appeared from the meeting that we called that they didn't have enough time to review it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back off from Reading, go into Wilmington or something, we're going to prepare a one month map uh, and present that and then they'll have time to look at it and discuss different issues and how to trim and then there'll be an approval, uh, vegetation management plan approval for that area. Um, uh, another um, thing that we're going to do is tie in the Conservation Commission into the loop. We provided some education as far as when lines are touching trees, wood does conduct electricity if that primary is laying on that tree in such a way, you could have a child touch that tree and they could get hurt. Mm -hmm. So while the tree warden is in the business of preserving the health of the tree, uh, we are in the business also of preserving the health of the tree, but also trimming it back to remove any immediate hazards. Something else that was learned is that, you know, trees touch wires going down a street. And when you have a circuit and you have a fault, you may have a number of burn marks on that wire all the way down the street. And I don't think it was realized that we have to trim each of those trees down the street trying to find the fault. Because if the lineman, <coughs> excuse me, was to put that cutout back in and the fault remained, that could be very dangerous for them. So that's why when someone says, well, if, if that was the tree causing it, why did you trim out some other trees on the street during the emergency? And that, that is the reason. So what we agreed to, if there was any subsequent trimming that we didn't finish that had to go to the next day, we would then call that loop of people and everybody would come down and they could take an assessment of, of what we've done, what was the emergency. So those are really, um, and the integra and the uh, vegetation um, management plan, right? The, uh, the integrated vegetation management plan, uh, the tree warden is reviewing it and he is going to get back to us on it and then we'll be going to the eight feet. So we have minutes of the meeting. Uh, I think it was a very productive meeting. That's We've good. come up with some new forms. We've revised the vegetation management plan and they're going to be presented next week. Um, I think this will help eliminate uh, some of the concerns. It, it, it would appear to some people that this is a little bit more aggressive than, than what uh, perhaps Aspelin was was doing or what people were seeing um, but rest assured that you know the safety of the public uh, and the workers is number one you know the aesthetics of the tree how we directional prune them and working cohesively with the towns and the tree wardens is is what we're trying to achieve here so it was a great communication meeting and you know we'll have some feedback and if we need another one we'll do that good, good. just to add on so uh, as, as a result of a communication from a concerned uh, citizen of Reading. Uh, I had the opportunity to communicate some of the information that Colleen shared, particularly around the advance notice when they're preparing to, to come and trim the tree. So I think that response is, was well received. There was two, uh, so Colleen, if, if I understood it, so is Re Reading, uh, I guess I was on the impression Reading is currently at eight feet, but they're now at five feet, but we'll go no, to. Right, we've never gone to the eight feet. We presented it to the selectmen, and yeah. once we submitted the, the IBM yeah. to the tree warden, it gets reviewed, they approve it, we go to the eight. We hadn't gotten that back yet from the yeah. Reading tree warden. So there was two, two follow-up questions from this particular individual. One was, uh, the uh, I guess, more a concern around what is eight feet going to be too long a, a span? You know, versus five feet in terms of protection. Actually, eight to ten feet is the standard uh, mm -hmm. cut. Right. The IOUs, the independent utility operators, they, I mean, they have a larger territory. 
uh, they go to 10 feet. You know, depending on the species, you know, you can top cut silver maples, they, they won't hurt the health of the tree. Yeah. I mean, this is why in this particular RFP, as opposed to the one that was yeah. here before, we have a master arborist as part of that contract. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that mm -hmm. they're working with the tree warden and we, you know, we are taking the health of the tree into consideration in everything that we cut. So that, let me play that back. So that could mean eight feet's the norm, but given the individual circumstances, health of the tree, it could be less than eight in that particular situation? Well, it depends on the species and the growth. Right. I mean, you're not going to really trim out anything that's not, uh, you know, you're trying to keep that distance based yeah. on the so growth it's not of the tree. So it's not a prescribed eight feet no matter what it's going to no, be? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's a clearance yeah. from the line mm -hmm. is what you're supposed to be maintaining. Right. You know, so it's only what's, you know, so if you have a tree that's growing directly underneath the lines, you're going to have to top the tree. Um, but there's a number of species that are not hurt by that type of thing. And, and typically towns wouldn't plant, because you know, they'll, they'll plant trees right under the line. So right. uh, that would be the first area. And, and a lot of times, if you know, you'll see a lot of the older trees that were planted because they couldn't be topped or whatever, you'll see these big seeds where the wire's going through them. Yeah. And, um, but it's just to be, is the five feet and eight feet clearances or actual cutting them out? Those are clearances. Well, the clearance cuts. Clearance so if cuts. it's touching the wire, you would trim it back eight feet. Right. Okay. So that it's an eight-foot clearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, I, if you don't mind me mentioning, just to, to reiterate, we do not um, cut private property trees um, unless there's a hazard. If someone has a private property tree that's laying on their service line and it's smoking, we will go in and we will remove the hazard don't want to take liability or responsibility for the health of that tree we are simply removing a hazard and it's the same thing if you have a, a tree that's growing out into the street that's actually owned by the property owner and it's laying right into a primary I mean it it's you can watch some YouTube videos I mean it's just a matter of minutes before the tree will catch on fire and the wire will be on the ground and, and that cutout may not always open so um, you know, so those are the only two areas where uh, we'll even touch uh, private property trees. But for any large tree that might be going onto the primary, even though it's private property, we'll probably, you know, discuss it with the tree warden. Right. And um, yeah, I think the process that you have is good because it, it involves uh, all the stakeholders in yeah. the town, mm -hmm. the, the tree warden. Uh, the, the only follow-up question uh, in regards to the changeover from, uh, you know, ours. Uh, to, uh, to spans, uh, the question was raised, uh, you know, understanding that obviously there's pluses and minuses with, with either process, but when it comes to the spans approach, uh, it, what controls are in place or, or need to be in place to prevent it from being, you know, I guess the theory being, you know, hourly, maybe it's going to be done very slowly and carefully because, you know, there's no rush, of course, that also adds expense, but from a span approach, does that encourage, you know, a faster, maybe less cautious approach to the tree trimming? Um, I don't believe so. I mean, no. um, we're, we're um, what you get out of the span is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many hours it takes. It's a span, and 120 feet is a typical distance between two poles. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's going to be trimmed to so that they don't have to come back for three years. They're not going to trim more than what the vegetation management says uh, it's being looked at by the tree warden I mean um, from a, from a, a cost-benefit standpoint um, this is a much better uh, situation sure, for yeah. red and white yeah and I think uh, the assumption is we've hired a professional organization who's going to take the care and attention mm -hmm. to making sure it right. gets done correctly also if I may add the assistant general foreman Matt Fong yeah is also in charge of two trimming programs so he's following that and checking to Right. Is monitoring. Who is that? I mean, Matt Fromm. Yeah. Yeah. He's the assistant general foreman. Yeah. And he, every morning, one wants to be assigned to work with the tree right. and the crew. So you got to follow them to make sure that they check right. the work, yeah. making sure that the crew is on the side. Good. The, the tree warden and assistant tree warden said, for the most part, they were happy with, you know what I mean? 
it was just in certain cases if they hadn't gotten out to look at that street, even though it was emailed to them, yeah. it's hard to say what was there before if a customer is, you know, um, has an issue. But, yeah. um, but we're resolving that. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, I think the response has been great. Obviously, uh, you know, we appreciate citizens who are concerned about you know the, the natural uh, assets of the town, but. As you pointed out, there's a balance. There's uh, safety and uh, you know health and safety issues along mm -hmm. with the you know concern for the environment and right. sometimes those aren't overlapping. You know, and, right. and, and clearly safety is uh, always of number one importance. So. Good. Any other comments from the commission? I, I think that the. Uh Great. Thank you, Colleen. That's a great report. Okay. Uh, now I think we'll have a power supply report from Jane. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go over some highlights from the report. Uh, I've created a few graphs uh, to review the month of June uh, preliminary. Uh, this is just prior to the uh, close of the fiscal year. Um, so this graph depicts the energy usage and the peak demand for June. Uh, the yellow bar is the energy or the megawatt hours. Um, if we look at that, comparing last year to this year, we had about a 1.7 percent uh, decrease in our, in our energy uh, usage. Um, and comparing the demand, it went uh, from 142 to 138 for about Keep a going, 22, and a half page 22. reduction. So the, the um, scales mm -hmm. are a little different, so mm -hmm. it might be not as dramatic, but um, there was a 9 uh, megawatt drop in June uh, this year compared to last year. Mostly weather related. It's all weather related. Yeah. Um, uh, an interesting uh, observation that we looked at from the customer's perspective uh, we looked for the fiscal year uh, what the average cost of energy. Uh, the energy component represents about 50% of the bill. Um, and so if we look at um, the last five years, um, in 2011, our average energy cost was a little over uh, 5.7 cents. Um, and then if we compare that to this year, it's just really at five cents. So the last two years have been Other pretty way. consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's helped Next one with down. the natural gas, with there some of our <laughs> uh, portfolio um, purchases um, in our laddering and layering approach. And then that's uh, brought some stability for our, for our customers, for all customers. Um, the next graph looks our, at our energy resources by June. Uh, June was a good month for us. Our average cost of power came in around $43 per megawatt hour. Uh, typical usage, 15% of our power came from nuclear, 9% uh, was from hydro and wind resources. Uh, we got 9% on the spot market, 64% uh, uh, was uh, allocated to our power supply RFPs, and about 3% came from our Stony Brook and our uh, Watson plants that run on natural gas. Um, so that's pretty typical for the month of June. Uh, this next graph uh, for June, the transmission costs seem to increase significantly um, going from this year to last year. So we took a look at that and there's a trend, an upward trend here. Uh, there's two components that go into the transmission costs. Um, it's the rate that, the, that, that we're charged by the regional network service, which is a socialized rate from all of New England. And then it's our peak demand. Um, one thing that I want to note is uh, the way the ISO bills transmat transmission, it's a one month lag. So the June transmission <coughs> costs are actually ref reflective of our May peak and our May charges. Um, with that said, the rate uh, going from 2014 to 2015 increased by 2.4 cents. Um, however, the peak demand went from 101 in 2014 to 138. Uh, so there was about a 30%, 37% increase when we look at our peak demand. Um, as I said earlier, that's really caused by weather. And so if you look at cooling degree days from May of 2014 versus uh, May of 2015, uh, in 2014 we had zero cooling degree days in, this, in, this, in the Boston region. And then in 2015 we had 18. Uh, 
Uh, so we had a couple of consecutive days of high 80s, low 90s. Yeah. By the time you get to that third day, uh, that has a direct impact on our heat demand. Uh, so that I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Bob, so I don't want to steal your thunder. Jane, just a question on the uh, energy by resource. Uh, and maybe you've said this before, so do you have sort of a, uh, a pro forma or a budget that you target at the beginning of the year where you'd, because I'm sure some are more cost effective and desirable and available than others, so do you start out with kind of a, here's what ideally what the pie should look like and yep, then? We have, we have a model that looks at, at, at the prices of our resources within our portfolio, yeah. uh, some of the policies where we have, where we have um, uh, there was a push to get some renewable projects within the portfolio. Um, so we take all those things into account. Um, the, the tricky part comes with the, uh, the units that we own, not necessarily the nuclear units, but the natural gas, because those get bid into the market. And yeah. depending on whether that unit price clears or not clears, that unit will be turned on or off. Um, so that's really dependent on the natural gas prices, the load of the region. Um, so ISO New England dispatches those resources based on need and then there's a settlement process after the fact. Okay. So we, we have projections yeah. for what we think on an annual basis and monthly basis those, those resources yeah. should be. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Jane? No, I'm Any on. other questions for Jane? No. Okay, great, Looks thank good. you, Jane. Okay, uh, Amit will now do the engineering and operations report. Yes, thank you so much. Good evening. The capital improvement project the fourth category and uh, you have the dollar value in your package but uh, I'm going to read them uh, so I don't read each one okay uh, because it's not on the slide and the construction project we in the month of June we spent twenty eight thousand two hundred thirty one dollars that includes the project for building street in Wilmington operating the old Linfield Center Coast Farm and uh, yeah let me get a different cup of coffee okay good thank you inspection of the overhead lines, we've got 20 feeders for this quarter that we have inspected, the list of those are uh, on the slide. The manhole inspections, uh, this is pending, and uh, the reason for pending is that we'll be waiting for the GIS uh, data collection that, you know, we had the RPRT out. <coughs> They're going to start the work uh, in, by mid-August. Mostly cut off replacements, we got 2,799 we started, 90% of the space is completed. The pre-trimming uh, of the January to June, the end of June, we had 1,500 spans completed, which brought the value to, uh, we spent 
Station maintenance inventory scanning was done for the month of June. We couldn't find any any problem at any of the substations, so everything uh, go well at the parks as well. Parks, uh, the river park, and uh, the animal supply center as well as the park of the area. The next slide is the reliability for the month of June. The SAVI system average of dust generation index and customer average. Yeah, I mean, I thought in an earlier conversation you had mentioned that uh, the, the opportunity, and maybe that's in a future meeting, uh, so we had all the uh, reliability study recommendations, and, and I know that some of them have already been approved, but am I right in saying that uh, in a future meeting or meetings we'll be able to kind of see the projects that have been... It's in done. It's done, okay. It's a person, excuse me, can I, may I speak? Sure, okay. of course. Um, it's a, I think we were asked to do a September presentation. Oh, yeah. Good. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah. what was okay. recommended, what we mm -hmm. have accepted when we're working on who it's been assigned to. Um, Great. Good. All the lists. Great. Excellent. Excellent. I was just previewing it. Yep. There yep. You go. Good. Thank you, Amit. Okay. Uh, that takes care of our uh, engineering update uh, and uh, now financial report and sales trending update, uh, Bob Pornia. Yeah, I'm uh, still in the process of uh, closing out the year in numbers. Uh, I'm still waiting for some, uh, a couple of key figures to come in. But my prelim numbers right now, uh, I'm showing about 2.8 million of net income. This represents about a 6.2% uh, rate of return. So these are very prelim. It's something I think we're all feeling, right, Bob? And, and the compound average rate on that is about half a percent to a percent uh, or so. It's been kind of going down, uh, you know, with the expectations. So we, and hence what we can do with the economic viability to either increase revenues or, or do something different uh, here as well. Okay. okay. Any other questions for? Uh, no. Bob? No. 
Okay. Um, we have some bids. Okay. You want the motion? And we can Please. Bid. Okay. Move the bid 2015-13 for line truck lift equipment inspection and preventive maintenance service be awarded to James A. Kiley Company for 105345 as the lowest qualified and responsive bidder on the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Then hearing uh, all in favor? Motion carries okay. 300. Ready for the next one? Please. Move that bid 2016-07 for replacement of circuit breakers be awarded to Wesco for a total cost of what? 1605. The agenda has 16. Okay. All right. Let me start again. Move that bid 2016-05 for replacement of circuit breakers be awarded to Wesco for a total cost of 549750 as the qual as the lowest qualified bidder on the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Okay. Discussion. Not appearing. All in favor? Motion carries 300. Okay. Okay. So um, we have some uh, board meetings uh, in September and October, Thursday, the September 24th, and Thursday, October 29th. So mm -hmm. Yep, that's fine. Still, I think, yeah, I had to put those on the calendar. Yep, for sure. yep they're fine. Okay. We uh, have the NEPA conference, too. Yeah, we have the NEPA conference. And right. I, think, I think we have 100% uh, board participation. Yeah. Good. That's great. Good. Great. Also, one of our commissioners will be presenting here, Dave Talbot. That's correct. Right. Yes. Uh, regarding the fiber discussion. So the next item is the policy committee, and we need to uh, need to set up so a meeting for that. Yeah. You'll, you'll email us and get some dates. What uh, maybe we should just for guidance for uh, for Gene? Do we want to? August probably is not a good month. I don't think we need to have one in August. Do we? So I think we'd already sort of plan maybe September. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. It's two birds or one stone. Oh, I like that idea. Okay. And uh, we have a August 12th cab meeting. Do we need? Uh, uh, Dave Hennessy is going to cover it. Dave Hennessy has that. Okay. Right Dave's going to cover it. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, we have a uh, any other business? Call me, Gene. Good. No. Okay. So at this time, uh, we want to move that the board yeah. go I'll move that the board go in executive session to approve the executive session meeting minutes of February 26, 2015, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property relative to RMLD's fiber, Verizon poll agreement, and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Do you need a roll call vote? Yes, roll call vote. Okay. Ms. Pacino, aye. Okay. Tom O'Rourke, aye. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. We're good.